Hey guys, Matthew with Tactical Comms, and here with a follow-up video from last week's video about the Maui fires. And so I first want to re remind everybody, thoughts and prayers to all the victims and survivors of uh, the fires in Maui. Wildfire is very devastating. Any fire is devastating, but it's just thoughts and prayers to everybody. But I want to talk to you about situational awareness. In last week's video, I gave you some tips and some ideas on how you could stay better informed from the all hazards weather radio to uh, AM FM radio, broadcast radio to uh, amateur radio public safety, including two-way radios and scanners. Uh, all of those are, are great situational awareness tools, but a, a lot of questions I've been getting is how could this have happened? How, how could there be such a communications outage and people not having cellular service, internet service, and telephone? And, and from all indications are this fire started um, in the early morning hours and it was secondary to another fire that had started uh, almost the night before around midnight. Uh, and we also know that there was a hurricane that was far south of the islands, but it was producing 65 mile an hour plus winds. And so anytime you introduce high winds and uh, unusual occurrences, there's the risk of power lines coming down. And when power lines come down, power goes out. Most cell sites have a battery backup, but a lot of cell sites don't have generator backup. So once those batteries run out, the cell site goes offline. And from all indications that, from what information I'm able to get out of the area, it looks like a lot of the cell sites were on building tops, uh, not necessarily towers. So there may or may not have been generators there uh, that could have helped. And then the cell towers have to connect back into some sort of ground base at some point to be able to connect you into this public switch telephone network. And so when the power went out, either to the cell sites or uh, loss of power or operation to the uh, local switched office, uh, you, you could see uh, some pretty significant outages. Now, there's a, uh, the, web, the FCC maintains reports and information that's public viewing. I'll include a link to the website. It reports on the conditions of 911 services, wireless services, aka cell phones and such as that. And uh, it also goes into a little bit of deployments as well as uh, wireline and cable systems. And then I think it's got, a, yep, it's got some broadcast information. So AM radio stations, what's available, and what's not. Uh, but right off the bat, it, we see some really, really interesting sites. And this, again, this is of, uh, as of August 12th at 6 a.m. The total number of cell sites serving uh, the Lahaina area is 21. As of 8, 12, 23 at 6 a.m., all cell sites are out of service. And so power goes off, batteries die, cell sites go dark. Uh, we mentioned the FCC report that there were 21, all 21 sites as of August 12th were offline. I don't know at what point during the fires that happened, but I do know that from multiple eyewitness accounts, firsthand reports, uh, they had no communications, uh, roadways were blocked, uh, social media was inaccessible, cell phone was inaccessible. So uh, that's, that's something we can think of. How can you be better prepared? Now, a couple of things that you can do is reputable sources, um, such as uh, for medical, you want, I, I refer everybody to Skinny Medic. Uh, that's hands down, I've known Skinny for a long time. That's where I go. I really enjoy watching Survival Dispatch, uh, their YouTube channel. Uh, they do a lot of good videos on actually not just telling you what you should do, but actually taking you out in the woods and trying it, uh, being better self-sustained, better prepared. Uh, and then I'm really enjoying getting to know uh, Tony over at Wyoming Survival. Uh, There's some really good content on his blog, uh, specifically dealing with communications. And then there's many others, uh, Civil Sentinel, uh, Florida Outdoors Man, uh, several others that are out here as well. Uh, but the biggest thing you can do is be aware of your surroundings. Keep an eye on what's going on. Uh, when you start seeing weather, severe weather reports, uh, pay attention to that. Uh, we mentioned in last week's video, the All Hazards Weather Radio. We mentioned um, communications from two-way radios with public safety and ham radio. And then we also mentioned broadcast radio. There is a report, as part of the FCC's report, it identifies that all three of the AM broadcast stations were still online. Now, we don't know what information that they were pushing out, whether it's syndicated or anything like that, but they were online. Um, and I mentioned, uh, do you know two multiple ways to and from home? 
uh, just taking in a day-to-day -day action in my career when we would have to block roads from uh, fires or, or wrecks or things like that, it, it always amazed me how many people didn't know another way home or another way to work. Uh, you should know multiple ways to and from the points that you travel. Uh, if you're on vacation, it's quite likely that folks, when we, when we go on vacation, are we thinking emergency preparedness? Are we thinking I need to know multiple ways out? Uh, probably not, but we need to. Uh, we need to have a plan. We need to have uh, a good friend of mine that was uh, very influential in my tactical training years ago used to have this saying, two is one, one is none. So making sure that you have at least two ways out. In the fire service, uh, we talk with your escape plan for in case you have a fire in your home, having two ways out. Again, two is one, one is none. If you haven't already done so, take a minute to like and subscribe. And then I'm gonna ask you to share this video because I'm gonna continue with this series. And uh, next week we're gonna talk about some other tips that you can do uh, to help you stay more prepared. Uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you have a great week.